Hello there. Now, depending on how many of my previous videos you've watched, you may or you may not know that I absolutely love shower filters. They're only just becoming semi-popular for ponds and I can't understand why it's taking so damn long. They're absolutely brilliant for removing ammonia, nitrite and when the right media is used, nitrate as well. So wouldn't it be awesome if we could get one of those for an aquarium? Well, I've lost track of the amount of overhead shower filters that I've designed on paper for aquariums and at the end of the day I thought some of these are cracking designs but it's going to cost a fortune to put into production and it's just going to get copied. Everything you do gets copied. So there's no point in me ploughing money into it, making it popular and somebody else coming along taking the glory. So I gave up on the idea. I thought it would never happen. Obviously I've seen some people making them, uh, like DIY videos on YouTube and whilst they may be functional they look at best, they look awful. They're, they're not pretty to look at. And at worst, they're not functional either. They're, they're, they're not ideal. So it came as a massive surprise to me when I was sent a link to a listing on eBay where somebody has actually taken the time to develop an overhead shower filter. And there's not one thing that I would change about the design. Check this out. There you go. What do you reckon of that? Absolutely awesome. Now these are available in clear and also in black. You can see the water showering through there. It operates absolutely perfectly. Now this is the one with nine trays and each one of those trays has an overflow. So this is the sort of thing you get set up and literally forget about. It's never going to overflow over the sides because you've got your overflow here which feeds back into the metal tray and back out to your tank. Now you'll have to forgive the colour of the water here. I've actually just lifted that straight out of my pond. So really for a clear line pond that's pretty clear. Now it's getting clearer all the time but I'll tell you about that in another video. Now this one's suitable for a tank I think roughly 56 centimetres to Ooh, 62 centimeters wide which is roughly two feet but they are available in a 12 tray version and also an 18 tray version as well which is obviously much wider and they offer an incredible amount of filtration each one of these trays holds approximately 800 grams of this biohome ultimate those unfamiliar with Biohome Ultimate can check out a link I'll put to it in the video description. But basically that's the sort of media that supports aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. I've married the filter up to a 750 litre an hour pump. Um, I think I got that one from All Pond Solutions. Again, I'll put the link in the video description. And as well as feeding out of the top of that pump to feed the spray bars, it actually feeds out of here as well. That's maybe... I don't know, 60, 70 litres an hour, but it has an adjustable air line, so you can actually oxygenate the water as well, which gives you a little bit of a current going around there. So that just ensures good transfer of pollutants and gases between water and atmosphere. So basically the pump pumps up here, that splits via a Y piece, and all these pieces just push together with no leaks whatsoever. And then you've got two spray bars and these spray bars, first of all, feed through the foam. Then through a fine pad. And then they go into the biological media. And if you want chemical filtration, I've set this one up to demonstrate how that can be done. So we've basically got mechanical filtration here. So that's straining out all the heavy muck. Then we've got biological filtration with the media that supports the bacteria which consumes ammonia, nitrite and nitrate and in the bottom of here we've got a coarse foam that's been impregnated with carbon but you can go with bags of carbon so you would always do your filtration in that order mechanical, biological, chemical now this middle section is set up how I would advise people normally didn't set up their canister filters 
but in this case it's a little bit different so we've got mechanical biological and then we've got another mechanical that's a polishing pad so that pad is the same as that one fine white pad just catches very very fine muck and as you can see that isn't causing the water to back up and clog the media if you had your polishing pad as the last thing the water hit in a canister filter your media will get clogged up but in a shower filter it's different so aside from looking pretty cool and enabling you to explain exactly how a filter works to anybody wanting to take a look at one what are the practical applications of this well in this case I've got it running over a storage container which is 70 liters this would make a cracking breeding tank for discus with that media in you're gonna get zero ammonia zero nitrite zero nitrates and it's the nitrates that are so important to breeders fish breed much better when the nitrates are low and if you can keep the nitrates at zero they're gonna be absolutely loving it they're gonna breed much better if you can keep nitrates at zero when you're growing fry which you could easily do in here they're gonna grow much quicker fish are covered in all sorts of receptors um, and that gives them feedback from the water about the pollutant levels so if you've got ammonia nitrite and nitrate all showing up in your water the fish is thinking oh god I'm in a bucket here this is no good at all I'm not gonna grow I'm not gonna eat very well it's gonna affect my digestion I'm just not gonna do very well in life if you've got zero ammonia zero nitrite zero nitrate the fish is tricked into thinking that it's in a much bigger body of water so it continues to grow and grow and grow it exhibits better coloration it breeds more and it's just all round better better filtration equals better happier fish and this filter offers awesome filtration it comes with no filter media or foams or anything like that it's basically just the lids the trays the pipes and also the metal tray which expands that it all sits in now each piece here is individually wrapped and packed into this box and I normally wouldn't go on about the way things are packaged and do any unboxing videos or any of that nonsense but it's it comes to you absolutely beautifully packed in perfect condition and if I told you that this cost me under 20 English pounds you probably think I was lying but that's how much it cost me I think it was 19 pounds 95 pence delivered which is a phenomenal price and it just puts it into context when you say you want to try and replicate some of the DIY videos that you see on YouTube and you need the container you need the fittings you need all sorts of this that and the other pipes ah. it ends up costing you more in materials to make something than it would to buy something ready-made which is 10 times better it's just a no-brainer and I, I don't know the source of the people who actually make these they're made in China but I would love to find out because I would like to see a really big company take these up possibly the likes of all pond solutions in the UK who really seem to be aggressively trying to take a big lump of the aquarium market I think they could do really really well with them and as well as the domestic market just imagine how good this would be for restaurants and pubs who have live food like crayfish and lobsters and so on you could get perfect quality water and you could purge your lobsters and your crayfish in here and they're going to taste better your customers are going to be happy it's an excellent system now, there's loads of different choices of filter media I've gone with Biohome Ultimate because it's the best for the aquarium side of things I'm not going to go on about it yes I sell it but it is the best just check out what people who have actually used it say about it that says it all there's hardly any wasted space in there the filtration from this thing even if you had crappy ceramic rings in is phenomenal now on the subject of shower filters and relating it more to ponds we're actually actively working on making a slightly cheaper form of shower filter media for the big shower filters that you'd normally use on ponds now the biohome ultra and the maxi ultimate does work exceptionally well but it's quite expensive it's certainly up there with bacteria house 
So we would like to try and make something a little bit cheaper, more hard wearing, and just as effective. That's proven quite difficult. So there's actually new materials coming into it, a new binding agent, which I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I don't want it to be copied. But we've got two prototypes so far. The first one is that, which is exceptionally hard, but not porous enough. The second one was that, which had an unbelievable porosity, but is too brittle. It reminds me of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The first porridge was too hot, the second porridge was too cold. Hopefully, the third porridge will be just right. So you can expect to see a new shower filter media for ponds coming soon, hopefully, from BioHome. Now obviously this filter isn't going to fit over the top of every single aquarium out there. But where it is going to fit is for breeding tanks, fish houses, restaurant systems, and also anywhere where you would normally have made an absolute balls up trying to make a DIY filter that worked half as good as that. Now just because I'm showing this setup with stuff that I happen to sell, don't think for one minute that you also have to use this. The media is the best, the foams are very good quality, but you can just put ordinary foams in, you can put ordinary media in, the likes of ceramic rings, noodles, even small gravel will work in there. You could go with lava rock. This is stuff that I've got from a supplier of barbecue materials. And that's the red lava rock. Unfortunately, it's nowhere near as good as the white lava rock, which is pumice, but it's still pretty good, certainly better than gravel. Now, looking at this reminds me of volcanic rock. Something that looks like volcanic rock is alpha grog. That would work well in there. You could go with that if you had live bearers in your tank, or if you had African cichlids or koi or anything like that, things that needed a high pH. It's actually drinking water quality pumice. That's what you would use to filter drinking water. And it does look very similar to an infeasibly popular filter media that's often questioned as to whether it's pumice, but I'm not going to get into that argument. This is better. It's all white pumice. There's none of the gray bits of gravelly muck in. There's no obsidian in. It's graded. It's very, very good stuff. That is as near as you'll get to buy a home as far as the structure and the ability to support aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. So really, of the DIY medias, if you're looking for something to complete the nitrogen cycle, to remove ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, remember the nitrates through the anaerobic bacteria's activity, you really want to be looking at the white pumice. But it's not suitable for the lower pH fish, which would include all your tetras, your barbs, pretty much 90% of the fish you can buy. This is really only suitable for your higher pH, mineralized water loving fish. So that's your Malawis, Tanganyikans, goldfish, and live bearers, which would include guppies, mollies, sword tails, platies, that sort of thing. So that's a good option, and it isn't expensive. Now looking at the two side by side there, you wouldn't think that they were both volcanic rock. And most people don't associate pumice as being a, a lava rock. I don't know why because both get spat out of a volcano, but there you go. This one is more dense. This one has a better structure for your two types of bacteria, aerobic and anaerobic. So they're just the same, but different. Now you'll notice that I haven't mentioned any plastic media as being suitable for here. Plastic media is only any good if it's in a moving bed. And I'll put a link to, well, I'll put a link to all the relevant videos in the video description. But I did a very detailed one on moving bed filters, explaining the benefits and also the drawbacks of them. Basically, they only support aerobic bacteria, so they tend to produce a lot of nitrates. Very good at reducing ammonia and nitrite through the aerobic bacteria, but they don't support the anaerobic bacteria. So they're really just one stage of that nitrogen cycle. Now, I have recently seen some videos of folks almost red in the face crying with anger about plastic media and its use in moving beds but 
it is an excellent media in moving beds. In a static situation like that, it's no good whatsoever. It simply hasn't got the surface area. Well, it's just no good. Just take my word for it. It's no good. Plastic media in a static situation is crap. It needs to be in motion to support any sizable amount of bacteria. And it's really, like, I don't want to go too much into it, but it's really a survival of the fittest thing. It supports a different, not a different strain, but a, a different strength of aerobic bacteria when it's moving and when it's static. When it's static, it's very, very lazy. It does a very, very poor job. When it's moving, it does an excellent job because that strong bacteria is the only sort of bacteria that can survive on it. And I, I don't know how folks still kind of understand that, but basically, I've already said all that in a video. I've already gone through all that, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bang on about that anymore. Oh. I love filtration and Obviously, you're watching this video, so you love it as well. You will love that if you've got space for it. Now, one thing I'll say in closing is, aside from this being an excellent filtration method, just remember that you don't need a massive pump to make these work. This one's only a 750 litre an hour pump, which by aquarium standards is very small. Normally, you get those internal filters with a couple of blocks of foam in, and even for like a, a three foot tank, there would be like 900 litres an hour or 1,000 litres an hour or even 1,200 litres an hour. That's because they need to suck the water through the foam many, many times an hour to actually trap the muck and to feed the bacteria, which is almost non-existent in those things. Here, the water just needs to rain in gently, so you don't need a massive pump. And when you want to move this thing, you just break it down into its individual parts put it in the storage container, slap the lid on and store it in your garage or your shed or your attic. So there you go, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you think somebody else might enjoy watching it, by all means share it on any forums or websites or Facebook or whatever. I'm not on any of those different sites. I'm purely here on YouTube. So I don't know where it gets shared, but if you want to share it, be my guest. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you in the next video.